Before introducing our moderator and starting this off, I would like to acknowledge uh, our wonderful sponsors uh, of this uh, program, the Mosaic program, which this panel has included, um, is a great program where we had 34 students uh, from around the country in Boston last week as part of preview day. Many of you uh, might have been there for it. Um, and would could not be uh, would not be possible without the support of uh, our firm sponsors Anderson and Krieger, Foley Hogue, Goodwin, Goldstone Stores, Mintz, and Wilmer Hale. Um, and I also like to make special thanks to uh, alumna Robin Walker from the class of 1999, who established the Mosaic Emissions Program Fund last year to help support the the wonderful program. Um, so with that. Uh, enjoy, and I am happy to introduce Colin Van Dyke from the class of 2005. Uh, Colin is a managing partner at Anderson and Krieger, and just a, a absolutely wonderful alum, very supportive uh, of the school uh, of young lawyers, uh, and a great member of the legal community here in Boston. So, Colin, take it away. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome. Uh, hopefully, this will be an informative and uh, maybe even entertaining uh, hour or so. Um, uh, as Zach said, uh, my name is Colin Van Dyke. Uh, I'm an environmental and uh, real estate lawyer at a firm called Anderson Krieger here in Boston. We've got about 40 lawyers. Um, I'm uh, really participating today because of how enthusiastic I am about uh, what BU Law has been up to over the last few years um, to not only diversify its student body, but to, to really create opportunities for access to law school um, and successful careers in the legal field um, for students across the country. And um, I'm really glad to see at least all of your names here. Um, and uh, I will uh, uh, be excited for to hear from uh, our panelists today. Um, I will let them introduce themselves. Uh, maybe we can start just on my screen is uh, Cesar, you are the first up. Great. Uh, thank you, Colin, and uh, congratulations to everyone here. Uh, I'm Cesar Lopez Morales. I'm a senior associate uh, at Oric, Harrington, and Sutcliffe. Uh, I'm located in Washington, D.C., and I graduated from BU Law in uh, 2014, um, and I specialize on appellate litigation. Fantastic. Thanks, Cesar. Uh, David, you're next in line here. Hello, everyone. David Linhart. Uh, I'm, I'm at Goulson and Stores and, uh, in, in Boston. We have offices in Boston, New York, and DC. I'm in the Boston office. Uh, and I've been practicing since 2012 for about 10, 10 years in approvals for, for development projects. Thanks, David. And last but not least, AJ. Hi, everyone. I am AJ Febles. I graduated in 2021. Um, and let's see, I am currently a corporate transactional associate at Wilmer Hale in the Boston office. Um, and I think, was there a question about our favorite part about BU or we're just doing? Well, why don't we kick right, why don't we kick right off that, uh, AJ, and you can talk about, you know, why are you glad that you uh, chose to attend BU Law? Um, I would say that I am glad that I attended BU Law because I was able to deeply connect um, with my professors, um, so much so that I still catch up with plenty of them um, quite often. And I really appreciate being able to get to know my professors on a personal level, but also, you know, um, feel stimulated and challenged by them. So, um, for example, I had Portia Pedro, uh, who taught, I I'm trying to remember if she taught me evidence. Um, oh, she taught crim procedure when I was a 1L. Um, and, you know, as a 1L can be pretty scary sometimes. You're not used to doctrinal courses. And Professor Pedro was just always available. She gave out her cell phone number and her email. And um, I just felt very much like she was someone that I could consistently reach out to uh, during my entire three years at, at BU if I had any questions or um, just needed to brainstorm sort of how to interpret a situation that happened in class. She was always a, a great person and always had an ear open. Thanks, AJ. Uh, David, do you want to answer the same question? Why Why are you glad you uh, chose to attend BU Law? Uh, sure. I, I, I got an impression very early on about BU Law that ended up being true. Uh, 
in, in that, that there was so much attention to each individual, a lot of concern. Um, you know, just not being a number. I went to a pretty large undergrad, and and it was it was a good experience. But there were times where um, where it did feel so large that that sometimes you know you could get lost in the mix, and that just wasn't the case. I mean, there was even this whole campaign around you know the pun of BU and BU, but Boston University, and also about being yourself. And I just I I found that I found that uh you know I got involved with blogging. <laughs> and sort of talk about your experience. And there's a whole group of us that would reflect on our experience of going through law school. There's something called day in the life, uh, same sort of thing, just trying to understand as a student processing in real time what you were going through and sharing it. Um, the, the career development office ended up being a place that I could go to to, to reflect on what would be next steps. Um, you know, when I went to uh, to law school, I, I don't think I had this whole vision of what the career was going to be following that. I, I knew I wanted to law school, and I figured uh, in real time I'll sort some of this out. And there were people to help me with it, um, in, including um, through successes, and then maybe some things where I had to bounce back. Um, I applied for a summer uh, program after one and a year that I didn't get, and there were people that just kind of talked me through it, particularly encouraged me to stay in touch if that was an opportunity I was really interested in. I did end up getting it the next year for for two all summer, and and I would, you know I I definitely thought through how uh, where I might have ended up on my own reacting to that versus having the encouragement of people at BU Law that said you know this is what you care about go for it you still got time and uh, for it to come back around was very meaningful. Thanks, David and Cesar. What about you? So for me, um, like AJ said, faculty was very important and. Uh, it was not just having very interesting, smart professors uh, teaching the classes, which was something I, I really enjoyed, but it, it was how committed they were uh, throughout law school and after graduation to serve as mentors, uh, recommenders, references to, to be a part of this network. And even as I was deciding between opportunities, it was the, the, the ability to go back to those same professors uh, at, at the law school and, and get their advice. And, and that I thought was uh, very valuable. Um, my impression of what the faculty of BU Law was when I was deciding where to go to law school ended up being the, the best thing for me and, and the best asset of the law school after graduation. And I would add that another thing that was really special about the school was just the number of opportunities that I had outside of the classroom. Uh, in terms of different groups, uh, externship programs, uh, where, I, uh, where I was able to work with, with a, a BU alum who was a, a judge in the Court of Appeals, um, you know, being a, a research assistant, TA, participating in, in competitions at the school. It, it was just a, a place where you could do a little bit of everything. And, and for someone like me who just had no idea what to do it, going in, into the law school, it, it was just a a great opportunity and, and something I, I really value. Thanks, Cesar. I actually like that last point you raised about sort of the extracurricular opportunities, you know, layered on top of what is a great academic experience. Maybe David and AJ, maybe you could talk a little bit about some of the activities you were involved in at BU as well. Well, you know, I actually I I could I could jump in here because I even wanted to bounce off a little bit of uh, that that idea of um, things at BU Law that ended up being helpful afterwards as well, mm. um, you know, and because and, I, I talked when I was saying about BU Law, my experience there, but that that summer experience that I didn't get the first time and it came around the second time, uh, it's called a Rappaport Fellowship, um, and so it's it's a you know Rappaport is in in Boston. There's there's a bit of a of a name to it. So after school, um, you know, I didn't just have be law on my resume. I also had rap report on my resume, and it, and actually, I was encouraged to be in touch with someone named Michelle Wu, who was a class before me. Um, it back when we were both in law school, and she sort of introduced me to the program. And um, you know, fast forward ten years, she's mayor of Boston, and I'm doing uh, approvals for projects uh, that need to go through city hall. And so, you know, I can kind of run into her and say, "Hey, remember those days back when we were in law school?" Through rap before. So, uh, you know, that ended up being an involvement that professionally was very helpful. Fast forward a few years. 
That's great. Thanks, David. AJ, anything you want to add? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, when I was at BU, I um, was really active in a lot of the affinity spaces. And as a 2L, was the president of the Black Law Student Association, um, but also very active in the Latino um, LOSA group uh, on campus. But, but one thing actually, um, speaking of sort of how the extracurricular layers onto what you're learning, um, I had a really neat experience, uh, my 2L, when I was on the International Law Journal. Um, because at that point, Trump had released the um, Remain in Mexico policy. And I was actually working on a note. Um, I was like working on uh, my note for a journal covering this topic, but simultaneously was covering um, really similar topics in my international human rights course. And um, I think someone mentioned the TA opportunity, but um, I was fortunate in that when I was at BU Law, I was able to teach an undergraduate course um, on migration policy, which was really awesome because it was just this like explosion of um, like a ton of different angles and ways to approach all the same problem. Um, and it was something that was, you know, interesting to the undergraduate students, but also, in, you know, a hot topic uh, nationwide and then, you know, a personal issue for me as a Latina woman. Um, so it's just really incredible how um, the sort of extracurricular opportunities that exist at BU um, will help you build community, but also will, you know, bridge sort of the, the things that you're learning in class with everyday life. And it, it's always great to see how the law operates um, in real time. Great. Now you, you've, you've each touched on various um, activities you were involved in, people who were helpful to you, I'm wondering, you know, just for this group, because I don't know where everyone's coming from in terms of their familiarity with how law school works or, you know, what what some of the, the tricks are. Um, I'm wondering if there are any other sort of resources or uh, groups that you, you know, you would recommend to a, a, law, a new law student um, or, a, you know, even a new lawyer that they, you know, engage with and and try to um, use as a resource as they as they try to find their way. I mean, uh, well, uh, David, go ahead. Go ahead. I saw please, that. no, please. I I talk too much. Please. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, AJ mentioned the the affinity groups at, at the law school, uh, which I, I I think are very important. Um, but even outside of of law school, um, there there are a lot of groups that I I think give you the opportunity to find out about things that you don't necessarily know exist in the legal career and opportunities that you should take advantage of while at the law school. Um, I, I'm i a big, big fan of clerkships, having done a, a few clerkships myself and, and judicial clerkships, for those of you who may not be familiar with that, uh, is basically you become, uh, you work with a state judge, federal court judge and assist in you know research, deciding opinions, drafting opinions. So it, it, it's an opportunity to work very closely with with a member of the judiciary and that's something i for example i didn't know was a thing when i started in law school and it was just talking uh with people and and joining organizations that i found out so one, one example outside of law school is an organization called the, the appellate project uh which just helps students find out about appellate litigation uh clerkships in particular what the application process uh, looks like and that sort of thing, which I'm sure that, you know, that the, there are many offices, including the, the CDO and the judicial clerks, uh, clerkships uh, staff at the law school that will help with that process. But e even expanding that network and finding out about those opportunities through organizations like the Appellate Project, it, it's something I would recommend. Uh, and, and that was, you know, I, the appellate project is, is something that was founded very recently, uh, but it, it's, it's, uh, an organization where I, I, for example, work very closely with, with law school students and, and, uh, I would recommend it, uh, if that's something that you would be interested in. <clears throat> David or, uh, AJ, anything to add on top of that? I, I could add on that. I mean, I think that I mentioned career development office already, which maybe that's not something to 
maybe not stop at career development office on day one of one L year, but but pretty soon could start to develop some relationships there. And I I thought um, there there's a lot more that could be done with a JD than you know probably any of us are thinking right now if you really spent time to 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 process what the opportunities are. So I think the career development office is a great place to to kind of open your mind about um, you know where you could head next. And uh, I'd say you know maybe maybe it applies in law school certainly coming out of law school i wanted to be involved with um sort of trade organizations organizations around a, a particular discipline more so than just with other lawyers although they're all of those are good but i found in my instance for example um urban land institute uh something new called uh, builders of color coalition that these these are organized around um urban planning and uh, real estate development and things that that you know per, are that relate to what I'm doing professionally but then I'm meeting with not just attorneys sometimes that helps you differentiate yourself because you are the attorney in the room uh, but but you're also seeing a bigger picture um, and it, it helps you stay maybe it can help you stay encouraged about you know the choices you made because you're you're seeing the bigger picture that you fit into um, and and that that can be energizing sometimes so um, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, stay, certainly not being isolated, finding ways to connect is, is a good way to, to have endurance. Yeah, and I'll just add, um, you know, like David, I did a, an internship while I was um, in law school. And uh, like Sis, I've had a wonderful experience because my internship was a judicial um, internship. Um, and so I would just encourage um, students to, you know, think about um, exposing themselves to different experiences that will help them get more knowledge about what it is that they like about the law. Um, I definitely didn't um, expect it to be what it was in practice. You know, it, it. I think I was expecting a little bit more of an idealized version of what it meant to be a lawyer. And so actually being able to try on different hats and see what it's like pragmatically was was really um, I think empowering for me when it came time to decide you know what route I wanted to pursue. Uh, but then I'd also encourage students to reach out to like the Boston Bar Association. Um, and there's another group called Lawyers Concerned for Lawyers, which is like a support group for lawyers in Boston. Um, but I've found both of those groups to be a great way to meet people um, that you're not sort of competing with in your section or like that you don't have to see every day. Um, and can just sort of inject kind of some new life um, when when the law school grind can feel um, you know challenging. But um, you know, I think I think just being open will will lead you down a lot of different roads, and it just takes having a, a really positive, open attitude, um, and the opportunities will will come to you. I'm curious uh, what the three of you have to say about whether your law school experience was different than what you thought it would be? Um, and, and if so, how so? It was, it, for me, it was very different. I, uh, for starters, I don't think I knew what to expect other than uh, a continuation of, of college. And I uh, assumed that it would be a place where you just, you know, do your readings, uh, do the work, go to class, take the exam and move on. And, uh, and it, it was, it was a big surprise because of all the things we've, we've talked about, you know, the idea of having a, just a, a very talented faculty at the law school that are willing to help you outside of the classroom and, and serve as mentors. That was, that was very unique. And, and I, I thought, um, I, I didn't necessarily expect it. Um, the idea that there were, there would be all of these other opportunities that it's okay to start a uh, law school and, and attend law school without having an actual plan of what you want to do, because you have all of these resources available to you that will help you, uh, in figuring that out. And, and, that gave me some comfort that once I joined BU Law, there were all of these resources available. You had very engaged, committed faculty uh, willing to help me out. And then that in the process of doing some of these activities, I could figure out what I didn't enjoy and the things that I really enjoyed. 
and and then you know in in talking to faculty and and creating that network sort of designing the plan moving forward so it was it was i i thought uh, a very different experience than just going to class making friends taking an exam it, it was it was really uh, an experience in itself and and it's something that you take with you uh, throughout your legal career. Thanks, Cesar. David or AJ, anything to add on there from your experience? I think for me, it was, um, what was different was that I was used to speaking about um, legal issues um, with a policy oriented framework, just given my background as a former teacher and working in education policy. Um, and so I think I was a little bit shocked at how little policy um, can really be reflected in judicial opinions um, and just how much practice it took for me to be able to set aside sort of like um, notions that I had about how the world should be or like things that we'd agreed, agreed to as a society and, and learn how to really examine the law. Um, and you don't have to worry, like you'll learn that. That's that's the whole um, process. But I think for me, that was part, probably the most um, surprising piece. And um, I th and then I think I just like surprised myself. You know, law school is is very challenging and very stimulating and just really rich and like so much to absorb. Um, and I think by the end, I was like just really impressed that I that I was able to like keep up and. Um, enjoy it. Uh, so I guess not not something so much that is surprising. I, I knew that law school would be um, a challenge, but I think I was I was more so just um, when you when you finally have a moment as a law student to take a breath and look at how much you've been able to accomplish and read and digest and train your mind to think. Um, it's really just amazing, um, and and it's. It was what I was looking forward to and part of what motivated me to um, apply in the first place, but it definitely felt great at the end. <laughs> great. Well, you know, I, I, I'm not sure if I had too many expectations of what law school would be like, because I, uh, you know, I, 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 I like to think that I'm adaptable, a little bit scrappy. I figure out things as I go along. Um, the, the biggest thing that stands out to be perfectly honest, it was so hard. It was so hard. But, you know, things that are worthwhile are hard. And the, I feel like the job I have now is hard. You know, um, I, I, when I went to law school, I actually already had it. Uh, I already had my son, a, a year old. And then I had my daughter during 3L year um, over spring break, which was not planned, but it sure did work out well to do it. Uh, right. You know, people were like, uh, you know, I just came back from New Orleans. Or, oh, I just had a kid. You know, that was my spring break. Um, and uh, but but you know, you just kind of just keep at it, and somehow got through it. Uh, speaking of you know, the people kind of encouraging you along the way. I, I remember even after three L year, I I really thought, is this the right time to take the to sit for the the for the bar? You know, because I you know I, I was I wasn't sleeping. I had a, a newborn and. Um, the in the lobby there were different bar prep courses that had representatives there and so, and just randomly someone there was was like well you know it's only gonna get harder the more time passes um that you know you're more likely to to get through this hurdle if you if you just kind of like you know stay continuous and don't take a break and if you don't pass you, you know you could do it again and i just let that person influence me so i was like all right let's go let's do this and and you know i got through it um so it had people encourage me to, to keep going but um but but it's hard and you know and, and a last piece on that um it's hard enough on its own law school is hard you don't need people to make it harder because they're jerks or something you know it's like at least if you could be around nice people it makes it easier to do it and and that, that's completely uh you know one of the selling points that be that it's just there there weren't jerks you know I, i'm not sure that i was that i wanted to deal with that it was hard enough on its own so and that's that's also my principle where i work now it's the same sort of thing it's like it's hard enough let's not externalize stress let's not discourage each other and you know if you can be in a setting like that you probably can do hard things i think that's a great that's a great point david and i'll just 
even though I'm the moderator, I'll offer my own anecdote, which is it was one of the most surprising things about law school was um, how cooperative and, and uh, helpful and um, how much teamwork there was, um, you know, with my section mates and 1L and all the way through. So um, I will say that was that was contrary maybe to my expectations. Um, so let me ask you, uh, you know, uh, the three of you a question that, um, you know, uh, just given given the makeup of our guests here, um, what was your experience in law school as a student of color? Um, you know, was did you have? I mean, I guess one question is like, did you feel like BU was a good a good choice um, as a student of color? Um, and did you feel like um, you know there were you know the resources that you wanted? Um, you know, I'll let you I guess weigh in on sort of what that experience was like, but. Uh, I know that may be something that folks here are interested in hearing about. Maybe we'll start at the other end, not to put you on the spot, AJ, but just on my screen, um, we could start with you. Sure, happy to. Um, I think I, have, you know, was at BU Law at a really exciting time. Um, so I started when Dean Unwachi Willig um, became the uh, president of the law school, and she was, you know, historic a historic um, position uh, as the first African American woman to hold that position or the Dean, excuse me, um, of the law school. Uh, and so with that, I think came some really exciting things for the for communities of color on campus. Um, one thing that stood out to me was um, as a 2L, uh, Dean de Robelant, who teaches property law, um, helped put together an entire forum um, with, with Dean and Wachi Willig regarding like critical conversations in the law and looking at sort of um, the ways that marginalized groups um, are left out of um, judicial opinions or um, just sort of the way that we, we think about these things. Um, and so we were able to, it was like this wonderful converse, conversation with scholars from all over the country. I think there may have even been an international scholar um, at the forum. Um, and it, it was basically like a, a conference of workshops to have these like really, you know, thought provoking conversations about what's missing in the law. Like, where do we go from here? Um, and, and that was, you know, I, that, that's not happening at other law schools, um, you know, having like that, those critical conversations just not at, at that level um, is just something that's really unique to BU Law and was really awesome that, that year. Um, but I'll also say I, you know, I've had experiences at BU where, you know, we live in an American society and law school is a microcosm for like the real world. And so there will be moments that things bubble up in class and difficult conversations come up. Um, but I have felt really supported by the faculty and staff at BU. I remember there was an instance um, and I think my constitutional law class, uh, I think we were reading Plessy v. Ferguson um, and something about like the way the professor had sort of like brought it up, just didn't, students did not feel comfortable. Um, and, it, and actually this professor is like incredibly well-meaning and like incredibly supportive of, of the community. And so I just knew that he probably just didn't get, didn't get it. Um, and so I, I felt comfortable enough to reach out to Dean and Wachi Willig and say, this and this happened. Students are like, you know, sort of feeling weird about it. I, I think it's totally fine to speak to the professor directly. Like, are you okay with that? Um, and I, I had sort of felt comfortable with her, her being a black woman um, to, to reach out directly. And, you know, there was just support immediately. You know, uh, Dina Machuela was like, absolutely. If you need me to intervene, I can. Um, she was like Dean Muir, the Dean of Students at the law school helped us reserve a room for all of the students in my section to like actually just hash it out amongst ourselves, like what it was that was bothering us. And so I found the school to just be really amenable to creating a space for conversation. And it was just a beautiful moment because we were, you know, as a, as a cohort, our section, we were, we were able to like draft an email together to the professor and like sign it from the class. And, you know, he, he read it and like apologized to the whole class the next day and, and then dedicated a whole 15 minutes to like talking through like how he should approach the issue next time. And so it just felt like just a really wonderful example of um, like crucial conversations and taking advantage of a learning opportunity. And I just felt supported by like every single admin that I encountered from BU in that process. Um, and so that was really, really affirming and um, I think just speaks to how comfortable I felt as a student of color there. Thanks, AJ. Uh, David or Cesar? 
Um, I mean, I'd say that I like AJ's story. Uh, so um, that, that was pretty good. I'll, I'll uh, you know, that that speaks to me, speaks to me also, um, you know, thinking about um, that, that that feels very authentic, you know, that, that that's what I that's what I associate with be you that you can talk about these things. People aren't jerks, you know. Um, there's there's also, you know, like there's a critical mass sort of thing where, and I think about this, this isn't even just at BU Law. I think about it at the the law firm I'm at has 200 attorneys. It's been around since 1900. And, uh, and I think I could start talking about this now because it's almost April 1st. April 1st is the beginning of our fiscal year. And so starting this next fiscal year, I my title will change. So I'll go from uh, associate to director to partner. So uh, thanks. Yeah, so, so I'm excited about that. Um, you know, worked for that a long time. I'm the first black male associate that's been, you know, made partner since 1900 in a 200 attorney law firm. Um, so I I know that part of what part of my experience uh, of law it it just involves bridge building, and I'm and I've and I'm okay with that, you know, and and um and I think that, you know, hopefully, over the course of my tenure, the that there will be more of a critical mass. Um, you know, before I'm done, but that, that I think that's part of it, and and I'm at peace with it. But it's something that everyone has to wrestle with, you know. Um, and but but I I think you know BU Law, the the affinity groups, the um, particularly in the in more recent years, uh, at the the attention there is, uh, you know, to to these topics. I, I think that helps, you know. But I but I will I I do remember going through classes. You know, you're at I, I was into property law, right? Because I do real estate. And so we're, we're, we're covering restrictive covenants. And I'm trying to intellectually process it, but but it's personal, you know, it's personal. So you, so you get caught up in that and then you want to process that a little bit and have and have space to just kind of deal with the emotional element. Think about your own story, your own biography. And, and so, you know, you have to, I think, be ready for that, you know, because uh, for others, it might just be intellectual processing, but it's going to hit your heart and you probably need some space to to process that and you and you will find people to process it with. Thanks, David. Cesar? Um, I would just add, uh, I think, you know, I followed, I graduated in, in 2014 um, and I, I followed the sort of the growth of the school, uh, especially in recent years in, in making a, a very intentional, intentional and conscious effort to create these spaces. And to, uh, as David and AJ mentioned and, and talked about, that, you know, the, the discussions about the law often come with, with very personal stories that one cannot just simply ignore as, as you, you know, uh, learn about the cases and, and, and go through, through the case books. And uh, in my impression is that the school and, and a lot of the members of the faculty become very aware of that. You know, when I was at the school, I I sort of realized that a lot of that needed to come from me. And, and it was, for example, just to give you an example, I, I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. And there were a lot of, you know, in a lot of the, the issues about the territories and, and the United States as an empire, colonialism, the insular cases, that's not really discussed in most schools. And uh, it was something that that bothered me. So I found out that there were two excellent professors at BU Law that had co-authored uh, an article on on the issue of the U.S. and the territories in Puerto Rico. Uh, professors Lawson and and Professor uh, Professor Lawson and Professor Professor Sloan. So I, I talked to both of them, and I, you know I read your article. I, I really want to talk about your article, and I organized an event from the International Law Society, uh, you know, at the, at the law school where he invited guests and the, the professors sort of led the discussion. And uh, we ordered Puerto Rico food, Puerto Rican food, and the, uh, did all of these things in order to have a, a discussion. Uh, and I think there were probably like 60 or 80 people there. It was very well attended. And it all came from just you know, uh, I, I really want people to talk about these issues at the school. 
And so that's something I, I really appreciated that, you know, the school sort of allowed uh, me to create that space and to have those discussions in a, at a very personal, but also uh, academic level with, with very uh, interesting, talented professors talking about that paper and, and talking about how those issues sort of affect you know, people in the territories, the Hispanic community, the intersection between constitutional law and international law. So, you know, I my my understanding is that hopefully a lot of that now is coming from the faculty and the school and the, the students can be a, a enjoy those events. But, you know, there are at times, as David said, even after law school graduation, when that's going to have to come from us and we're going to have to to put in the hard work to make sure that those conversations are happening. Thank you. Thank you all for that. Um, I want to turn to a question we got in the chat from, I think, Mayor, um, which is, you know, probably a question other people have on their mind. Boston has a certain reputation as not being terribly hospitable to specifically really anyone who's not white um, and, you know, maybe more specifically not white and from certain um, parts of the world um, genealogically. But uh, I guess I'm, you know, Cesar, I know you were only there for law school. Um, but, you know, all three of you, can you talk about, you know, your experience living in Boston? Like, do you feel like it's a, a place where you've been comfortable living and studying and working or not, or, you know, any, any perspective you want to provide, um, in the next few minutes to these, um, prospective students who may not be familiar with Boston with all of its wonders and warts. I mean, I'm all, did, did someone say ask me to go first or ask me to be quiet because I talk too much? <laughs> no, I said, why don't you go first, David? <laughs> um, I mean, I, I I can't so I can talk to it because um I've actually been in the Boston area uh wow, it's been 20 years now. Um I was born in New York City and I moved around a lot when I was younger, but I've been I've been but I was in Boston already working before then going back to law school. Um, and I have no family connections here, so I don't know why I stay. I, was, you know, once I got here, I think there were a lot of professional opportunities, which was meaningful for me. You know, I mentioned before already having a couple of kids, oh, a first kid, and then a second kid in law school. So I'm thinking about being able to take care of my family. I'm thinking about extended family in other parts of the country and um, the earning power that's possible in, in Boston and, and how far that goes. Uh, the educational opportunities for my kids as they're growing up at this point now you know my oldest is already in high school talking about college himself uh and and believe it or not because i went to bu law my wife went to bu school of social work and uh and public health and at the time my son was going to the bu daycare so we were like a real BU, day, day, uh, bu family and even now all these years later he's thinking very seriously about bu for undergrad and wants to stay in the area um, so I, I think I think it's worked out for us. Um, my experience of, of Boston has it's felt like an international city. I know everyone has different experiences. I didn't grow up, um, you know, in 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 grade school in neighborhoods where I felt like um, trapped in anything. You know, I, I sort of chose Boston and I felt able to move around um, and, and I've lived in different parts of Boston and greater Boston. But but it was it was always something where I, I was able to meet people. I think BU was a big part of that. At BU it felt like an international campus. There's there's a like a whole another level of diversity um, in 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 recognizing that and seeing that. Um, and so so I've appreciated that um, and and I've experienced that. And I, I don't know that that's everyone's experience, but but in my case it's felt like um, I you know I, I felt very connected to the just. To more than you know, to being part of a city that's a global city, and and being able to be part of that. Um, yeah, I'll add um, that being a student there at times felt a little bit challenging. Um, like I have curly hair, and I like to get my hair blown out, and there are only like certain people that I trust to do my hair. Um, so it, it was really tough to find like a hair salon. Um, sounds like a small thing, but like when that's the one thing you're like going to treat yourself with for the weekend, um, it feels really major when you can't find anyone. But 
Um, there are. The, the crazy thing is that um, there's actually a really rich community of color in Boston. It's just not like exactly where the campus is located. And so, um, which I was fine with. I, um, like David, you know, was moving from a city. I was living in DC before law school. And so was very used to hopping on a train for 15 minutes to get anywhere. Um, and so, you know, I quickly discovered that I could, you know, get Dominican food in Dorchester or Roxbury and get my hair done um, in those places. And, you know, um, there has been a huge effort, at least, you know, I, I'm not sure where things stand now, but up, up until I was a 3L, there was a really big effort by um, the affinity groups to create um, like living documents that included like places to get food, places to get your hair done, where to go to a barbershop. Um, you know, and, and actually there's also a, a, like a citywide group me. I don't know if people are familiar with that, but it's, um, basically like a WhatsApp, like a text messaging service. Um, and there's a huge group chat for people who identify as black African-American in Boston, and you can join the chat, like just anybody can add you. Um, and they they throw like tons of events. There are like networking events. Um, and I would say like, for students who are really missing home or are really missing sort of like having that community um, close by, I think that's when the affinity spaces like really come into play. Uh, like for me, Balsa and Balsa were those havens for me, um, but also like the Massachusetts Black Women Lawyers Association was really like a phenomenal place where I was able to like cry and get excited about like job interviews or like do mock interviews. Um, and so, I think, you know, it requires a little bit of effort, like you're not living in a city like DC or LA, for instance, where there's like major enclaves of people of color, but it's actually not that far, you're actually not that far away from it. Fenway is just a little bit um, isolated, but, but there's so much at your fingertips and it really takes sort of just like being curious enough to, to do a little bit of the legwork to get out there. No. Okay. So long, briefly, I, I agree with I don't have much to add and and, and that was you know my my experience as well um and I ended up uh uh taking the Massachusetts bar so I I, I did enjoy you know my, my time in Boston and and even considered staying there as a possibility even though I I, I was only there for three years um so yeah and I, I'm Puerto Rican too, so I'll plug that there's a great um, Puerto Rican restaurant called the Gigantes that's yes. like not far <laughs> from campus. That, that place. I, I feel like I want to yes. connect after this with everyone on this because my wife's Puerto Rican, so so oh, clearly God. we should be hanging out besides this Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all for it. Amazing. Awesome. Um, so we are at the point of the of the hour mm -hmm. when we are supposed to turn this over to questions from our attendees are there um mayor already broke the broke the seal on here so is there anyone else who's got a question they would like to pose either um in the chat or by uh voice by voice don't be yeah. shy what was um maybe what was like your your most like cherished memory at BU? That's such a good question. Question. Anyone? Cherished memory. I have I have two. One um uh, was Judge Torroya, the late Judge Torroya was a BU alum and a former judge of the First Circuit was also Puerto Rican. He was a commencement speaker uh, my graduation year. I had the 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 uh, opportunity to work uh, as a judicial extern while I was in law school. And uh, it was on on graduation day, just having my my family come up to Boston. It was their first time in Boston and, and the only time they, they were able to visit uh, while I was there. And it was just you know, being at the graduation, seeing this Puerto Rican judge delivering the commencement address and uh, just taking the picture uh, with, with the judge and having, you know, this is all of these Puerto Ricans in one picture. That was uh, that sort of uh, felt a very special connection at a, at a personal level. And even, you know, 
outside of that, I, I participated in moot court uh, at the law school and just going through through the competitions. Uh, and, you know, I, I was very dedicated and getting all of those opportunities to to argue in front of judges and things like that. That was something I, I really cherished um, while I was there. So those two moments, I guess. <laughs> I think for me, it was getting on um, the International Law Journal. Um, it was just like a mad dash to complete the like application process and getting the email that I got into my first choice of journal was just like amazing. Um, the, the application process for journal happens at the end of your 1L year. And so like you finish finals and then, then you have like your other final, which is if you want to apply to be on a journal. Um, and so I think I just was so happy to have been able to do it and do it well. And it was like a moment I'll never forget when I got the email and it was like, okay, it's time for summer now. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll jump off that. Um, and you can tell that we're all legal nerds here that, cause I, I actually was going to talk about the, um, getting on a legal journal as well. Um, and, and, and so now there's two of us saying that, so. Um, that's how exciting law school is, but you know what it, it, I'll, I'll generally the approach is like, you know, you'll figure your way out, you know, not, like not going to give strong directives, but I remember getting strong directive. You're going to apply for a law journal. <laughs> and that was, I was told, and I'll just pass it on. And I think it's kind of true. I mean, that's something to, to go for. It means something. It means something after law school. At the time, there were like there were high stakes when I was applying for the journal because, uh, and and actually, this, you know, joking aside, I mean, really high personal stakes. I I lost a couple of friends over the course of BU law, um, uh, to to cancer. Actually, it's, it's kind of crazy. I mean, like even at you know in in their thirties, uh, back to back. So, um, and one uh, there was one person that he was pretty close. He was actually involved with. Uh, with my wife and I when we got married and and he I mean we he was already in in bad shape so it wasn't a surprise but death always is a surprise and and it was um I was the the night that I needed to get my application in before midnight people were also gathering for for him uh and I I just barely got you you know you you have a week to do it and you try to use that whole week to do it but you're crunching at midnight I barely get it in time, um, try to recover overnight from not sleeping. And I woke up in the morning and, and he had passed overnight. And and it was it was just so crazy how that it's like it just heightens all the emotions you're feeling around all of it. Um and so so getting in, you know, it's like, well, I I, you know, I went through a lot to get in. So getting in was me, but I always remember how that felt. But I'd say even more, um, I had uh, I was hoping my note could be selected to be published. And you know this. This is like I said before. I mean, it's just for some people's intellectual exercise. This was like I was putting my heart in it, you know. So, I, so it was more than just intellectual. So having my notes selected to be published, that was just you know that that felt so validating, you know, for all of that hard effort. So, um, so those those were some of the. I still feel that. I still feel the feeling that I had, you know, when those moments happened. Uh. I will just, again, exercising my moderator's prerogative, just say that, you know, a meaningful experience for me, um, a couple of years ago, we, my firm started a, um, what we call our legal diversity fund. Um, and unlike a lot of sort of internship programs, it's not tied to people coming to work here. It's essentially just trying to move money to people who need it to open up access and opportunity for them. Um, and so we, um, one of our we it's both for law students and and for undergrads who are interested in law school and uh one of my uh one of our grantees who is my mentee um started at bu this year um in the law school so she's a 1l and uh you know i had my fingers crossed that it was going to be this great experience because i had such a great experience and you know we checked in a few weeks into the year uh, and we talk every uh six weeks or so um, and she's having every bit as great of experience as I had and, and, you know, what we're hearing from Cesar and AJ and David. And it's just, it's nice to know that, um, you know, leadership changes and the student body changes, but there's some continuity to the, to the um, kind of environment that BU Law offers um, year after year. 
which then gets me to another question we got in the chat from Valeria about why did you pick BU Law? Going, we talked about sort of how was it different than what you anticipated, but how'd you make that decision in the first place? I think for me, the Dean had a really big um, part in that decision. I feel like a lot of schools, um, you know, talk a big talk about diversity being important. Um, and for me, that was a value that I wasn't willing to compromise on for where I went to school. And, um, you know, Dean and Wachi Willick started that same year and um, the this university started the Anti-Racist uh, Research Institute, which, you know, I think to me, like spoke volumes that they're putting their money where their mouth is. Um, but also I just had, you know, incredible experiences with the admissions office and with the financial aid office. Um, and every time I called, people would answer my questions and follow up with resources and were kind, you know, um, just making a decision about law school is really stressful. And, you know, money is, is a thing that you have to think about. And, you know, I just had so many questions from like, like, how am I going to move there? It's like, where do people live? Like, what's the average rent? How much is the cost of milk? Um, and could I apply for work study? Is there a way that I could make money while I'm on campus? And, um, I just found Cheryl Constantine in the financial aid office to just be a complete rock star. And I think that having that person ability, um, between, you know, the people I interacted with in the admissions office and the financial aid office just made a huge difference for me. Not to date Cheryl Constantine, but she was a rock star when I was there too, AJ. So uh, she's been doing great work for a long time. Uh, David and Cesar, any anything you want to add about how you made your your decisions? I was just going to say that that was probably one of the primary reasons for me. Um, and it was just having that sort of transparency and help from the financial aid office and the admissions office. And then just going to the admitted students like weekend, I think it was, and and uh, finding out more about the faculty, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, that was that sort of sealed the deal. Yeah, I, I you know, for better or for worse, um, there is something to a school having a name. You know, should it be that way? You know, that's a that that's its own discussion. But um, BU Law has a name, and it's it's helped me to have BU Law on my resume. And I, I knew that when I was reaching out to people at BU and finding out about the school, um, there. There is uh, a lot of attention to public interest, even at a law firm now. A lot of there's a lot of focus to my practice, um, you know, in, in public interest. Appreciated that, and and I spoke to people. I mean, I showed up in person at BU on, on campus. I just walked through and uh, walked into offices. Professor Akram talking about um, immigration law and human rights. Walked into admissions. I talked to Alyssa Leonard, who's on the call here. Um, who just let me off the street walk in and had, you know, a long conversation about what it looks like to apply to be law and, and to be part of the community. And I mean, it was just a very welcoming place. Uh, and that turned out to be true when I when I went for my three years. Fantastic. So a quick pause for a public service announcement. Chloe put in uh, the chat, um, some information about a dinner being hosted by the Women of Color Collective on the 31st. So take a look at that. Um, after this uh, panel wraps up, um, someone will send along the contact information for everyone who was on this panel in case you have uh, follow-up questions that you want to reach out and, uh, and ask them. Um, before we wrap up, can I ask the three of you to weigh in on one more uh, question, which is, you know, what advice would you give to these folks and to anyone who listens in afterwards, um, you know, at this point in, in their in their journey, right? As they're thinking about where to go to law school, they're thinking about law school, they're thinking about what comes uh, after that. Um, you know, what is your, you know, what is some advice you have for them? I think for me, it was just take advantage of all the opportunities and resources that you'll have uh, at a place like BU Law. It, it's, as I mentioned earlier, it's okay to not know what you want to do. It's great to have a plan uh, and, and goals as well and work uh, 
to accomplish those goals. But I, I would also uh, say that it's important to keep an open mind. And as you go uh, through the three years of law school and, and after graduation, just make sure that you're aware of what, what, what's out there to talk to people, ask uh, questions. It's okay to, to ask uh, basic questions uh, because you'll find out more uh, about what's out there in talking to people. And, and a lot of it, it's uh, a lot of it are things that, that you may assume people always know, uh, but in reality, it, it's the kind of opportunities that, that just uh, open up, uh, well, you know, in creating that network. Um, and that, that's why a place like BU Law is so important is because you have people that are willing to go out of their way to, to, facilitate that that process um so keep an open mind talk to people and it's okay not to have a plan very good uh david uh well i, I guess you know what has been true since becoming a lawyer and i could say that after having had other career starts lawyers have a lot of agency you know in a society where people are stuck doing a lot of stuff that they don't want to do and i mean it's hard to be a lawyer but um but you you know that the idea of having uh you know the job i had right before law school i was a youth pastor at, and i was hearing crazy stories about what teens are going through what families are going through and i, I didn't feel like i could do much to make their situation better and um I think through law school, I, I, I do feel like I can do things that have a, a big impact on people's lives. And so, so that's something to, to, you know, that's, that's really special, you know, and, and to be very intentional about that, uh, to develop your ability to help people well. Um, it's, a, it's a great opportunity. So, so just be encouraged and, and stay at it. And I'll just add um, that now is the time for you to be selfish. Um, I think, as somebody who is like very close to my family and has a lot of like familial obligations, it's something that I really struggled with. And I wish that people had been a little bit more like direct with me about that. Like you will have to draw boundaries with family and with relationships and friends and um, don't feel guilty about that. This is totally worth it. And, you know, like I think um, one of the other panelists said, you know, what's hard means that if it's hard, then it's probably because it's something of value. Um, law school is the time for you to make those sacrifices um, and you will not regret it. There's, there will be nothing worse than feeling like it's over and you didn't, you didn't do as much as you could have or would have liked to see. This is the time for you to see what you're capable of when you maximize. And um, I would just encourage you to like trust yourself, push yourself, and don't be shy about communicating boundaries with your loved ones, um, because this this is something that will pay it forward um, tremendously. Great, great input. And just in terms of uh, one more thought, just about not being shy, um, you know, don't be shy or bashful or embarrassed about asking for help and asking for information and seizing opportunity. There are there are plenty of your uh, peers out there who are not feeling um, reluctant to do that. Um, and don't question whether you belong where you are. Don't question whether you're, you, you stand a chance to be as successful as the person sitting next to you. Um, you know, believe in yourself, believe that there are people that are behind you and, you know, trust in your instincts and just go for it. Um, so uh, we are now one minute past. Uh, we haven't been cut off, but um, I'm going to pass it back to um, Zach and just thank everyone for your great questions and uh, listening and thanks to AJ and David and Cesar for uh, participating. Well, thank you, Colin. Thank you, David. Thank you, AJ. Thank you, Cesar. This was uh, absolutely wonderful. Um, I hope all of the admin students on the call uh, took something of value from this um, and made you even that more interested uh, to come to BU Law. But uh, like Colin said, uh, you'll be hearing from uh, probably the admissions office with contact information for each of the panelists. You know, the great thing about lawyers, though, is their information is uh, online somewhere. You just have to Google them and you find it pretty easily. And I'll say if you do come to BU Law or wherever you go, take advantage of that alumni network. I have not met an alum who has said, I hate when students call me. They all love it. 
take advantage of it. They want to hear from you. They want to help you. They want to just be a resource for you. So whether it's at BU Law or anywhere else, obviously we hope it's BU Law, um, you know, reach out to people uh, once a month, once every two months, whatever, you won't regret it. And it can only lead to, to good things. Um, but again, thank you uh, to everyone. And, and we hope to, to see you on, on campus and be part of our community.